how can we have a persuasive PS on our emails? Well, regardless of whether you're sending a broadcast email to lots of people or a one-on-one -on -one email to a specific person, it's always handy to have a PS in our email signature. All right, so the reason for this is that regardless of what we say in the body of the email, we want to make sure that we always outline what the next step can be to go further with us. All right, so we really want to also keep in mind as we're thinking about what we include in our PS is the fact that there are going to be some cold people that don't know us yet. There's likely going to be some warm people that know us a bit and some hot people who are ready to take action. And so at a bare minimum, I would recommend having three separate components to your PS. One for the people that don't know you very well yet. And so that's a very low commitment, low consideration type of call to action. It might be to download a resource that's you know one page. Then you've got the people that are warm. They know you a little bit. So maybe for those people, there's a step or an invitation to register for a workshop or watch a sort of recording of a workshop. All right, so a bit more time and effort is required of them, but that's okay because they know, like, and trust you that little bit more. And then the third type of person to cater for is someone who is hot to trot and they are ready to move forward or at least ready to engage with your company. So for these people, you may like to have a link to book into your calendar, or you may have a call to action to send you a certain word via email so that you can arrange a time to have a conversation. All right, so cold, warm, and hot. We want to cater that for those people in your PS, regardless of if it's a newsletter, broadcast email, or your personal email signature. All right, hope that helps. My name's Adam Franklin. See you soon.